Hi guys, um, thanks for joining. And uh, yeah, this is just the Cisco collaboration group for anyone and everyone who is um, thinking to progress his career in, in Cisco collaboration technologies in future. And I hope this is gonna be an exciting journey for all of us together. So first of all, why I'm here? I'm just here to introduce myself as a group admin and um, my name is Amit and I have been working with Cisco Technologies, I think for more than eight years now. And uh, it, it was uh, an exciting journey for me. Sometimes I thought of also changing maybe to some other technologies, but then I held on to Cisco, but it was uh, exciting towards uh, now when I'm here. All right, so uh, just to give you a gist of what we are gonna do, you know, we are gonna share the information together, the knowledge together, not only about the, the technology, the day-to-day -day life uh, issues related to Cisco collaboration, but also about Cisco certifications. If one or the other person is gonna, is gonna do the certifications. So it, it's gonna be any issues that you, are, you guys are facing. Maybe it's not only me, I'm, I'm just trying to share my knowledge with you guys and maybe you guys can also share, yeah, you know, you can share your knowledge if, in case uh, you have got some really good information from uh, about uh, the new Cisco technology for the collaboration technology, I mean. Okay, so I thought of maybe just making a small video or, or going live for uh, introducing myself and then uh, maybe just share some basic or very basic thing about um, this SIP protocol so that people understand, you know, what's really gonna, uh, what's really happening in the group. It's not just the group is created and the people are added. That's it. Nothing's happening. It doesn't make any sense. I've seen a lot of groups on LinkedIn, also on Facebooks. They have made the groups and then you know, there are a lot of advertisements going on, spams and everything. I didn't like that. So I thought of, uh, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll refrain from adding such people who are here for advertisement or something. It's really gonna be just the study that's gonna happen here. All right, so please do let me know uh, in the comments or uh, maybe a direct message if uh, I shared something good or if you if you think that it was uh, not so nice, it would be okay if you don't go live, maybe just share, share some information about the new information, updated, updated information about Cisco and, that's, that's the, and then we are okay with it. All right, so just just let me share something basic, very basic about SIP. So you guys already know what is uh, SIP, uh, Session Initiation Protocol. And uh, yeah, if you want to learn the RFCs because the SIP protocol, it's based on different RFC, you know, uh, different vendors, Avaya, Siemens, Cisco, Alcatel, they are using different RFCs to, you know, um, implement the SIP protocol in their PBXs, yeah. So it, it's really not a um, mutual agreement between these uh, all these vendors. This is one of the major um, thing, you know, which is missing. Uh, but SIP uh, overall is really, a, really a strong protocol, easy protocol to understand, you know. Uh, so if you need some information about anything, just go to these RFCs, you can find each and everything that you want, you know. So let me start with just the advantages. What are the advantages of SIP? So first is the uh, converged voice and data. So you really do not need a T1, E1 uh, line from the service provider and then configure and see, okay, show ISDN status, if it's working or not working. And then you have a problem with the E1, T1 connection, and then you have a different data network. That's really not what SIP does. SIP can still handle voice and data over a single connection to the service provider. Yeah, it does a rich communications. What I mean by rich communications is it does voice and video both at the same time. And uh, it's in the same way that HTTP allows a web browser to deliver a wide variety of content types to a PC or web enabled device. SIP enabled devices can uh, also support media from many different sources, you know, 
and this allows for a session escalation uh, whereby for example a user might start communicating with a uh, chat message and then it can um, directly call uh, so add voice and then do a file transfer for example and then maybe do a conferencing video so sip is designed such in such a way that you know uh, it suppose any communications means that a user might require so you do not need also a lot of equipment to implement zip and then it saves your power and space requirements for example you know and costs especially the costs are really heavily reduced if you want me to um, you know discuss more on this cost thing because i can go on talking more and more but i would like to just give a one liner that zip um, reduces costs very heavily so if you want to discuss this let me know and i can do a session on that yeah and the failover strategies with the uh with the with the sip and the reliability it's it's really very very improved than you know your normal with your um isdn technologies if you compare with the normal uh, isdn technologies so this is just just there are many more but i thought that these are some of the major advantages of um, sip why why one should go with sip and not the isdn so what is a sip and uh, basically um, why would why would uh, one need a, a sip uh, to be implemented so basically sip is a signaling protocol used to establish you know connect modify and then tear down the communication sessions in the ip network so these sessions can be as simple as a two way call or like person one calling person two or it can be as complex as multi party web conference complete with audio video and a shared whiteboard application yeah and then this sip was modeled after this https and contains many of these uh, basic tenets of that uh, protocol first you know and sip is also is an english like you know text based protocol that's not easy to that's easy to read and it's also easy to understand and debug you know and you can read the debugs in a clear text format all right and sip can support any media it's not uh, dependent only on audio or video if you want text if you want fax everything any media can be supported via sip and also the third party uh, call control can be done via sip for example if you want to register an avaya phone or a siemens phone on cucm pbx of course you can do it as a basic third party phone or an advanced third party phone so it's a really you know um, extensive uh, protocol that you can use to implement in your pbx cucm pbx uh, so it's I'm, I'm just trying to keep it very short so the last thing um, that i want to show you is uh, why not h323 and mgcp why only sip why should we implement sip h323 uh, for me especially uh, there are a huge number of configurations that needs to be done in the h323 and uh, and this is why i would not like to implement uh, sip is simple to implement then h323 this is what i think and uh, this is what i have experienced in last let's say four or five years and uh, yeah of course you know with mgcp you cannot do a lot of uh, uh, configuration so it's like a uh, client server deployment model zip is as well is a peer to peer model and uh, it's a client server based i will i'll discuss about this in the next part uh, which would be basics part 2 but uh, yeah for now you just need to understand that uh, h323 is not media independent you know with sip you can do voice video web conferencing and let's say fax chat messages sms which which h.323 cannot do and if you ask about mgcp it has very much less capabilities as compared to h323 and uh, and uh, and uh, sip so uh, this is why uh, i believe uh, it's more important nowadays uh, that you implement sip rather than h323 
and GCP. And a lot of vendors are, are moving their infrastructures and also moving um, to SIP. So this is what I understand from the latest news from US or um, Asia or, or Europe that all the vendors, more, almost all the vendors uh, would be migrating to SIP in a couple of years. So then it, it, it's really necessary to start talking about SIP and um, you know implementing SIP, understand SIP, how it works, where it should be implemented, what is the importance and at the device level, for example, how can we do it, all right? Okay, just uh, maybe comment in the comment section if you have any more information which I missed maybe or uh, what if you would like to discuss something in, in my next video and definitely I will I will uh, keep those points um, and, and I will also refer to my notes which I used to which I used to learn about SIP, you know, it's not that it's coming only out of my experience. I also used a lot of notes to understand this uh, SIP protocol, which uh, I'm still learning about it. And uh, SIP is very extensive. It's not that you can just learn it in one month or one year. So you can keep learning about SIP. So uh, it's going to be, uh, um, I think, an extensive, I believe, um, session next time as well about SIP. Let's discuss about it. Maybe if someone wants to come um, online, we can discuss this and um, yeah. Until then, thank you very much.